We're live with the hottest topic in real estate, which is, especially in California, how do you make money in this stuff? How do you make money in this stuff? How do you make money? How do you make cash money? Everybody wants to know. Right? <laughs> especially so, in California. My buddy Scott Boyer's here. He has the answer for this. And so the, the conundrum has been, and we'll just kind of start with the obvious, market shifting in real estate. You yeah. can see it very clearly. Yep. Um, some buyers don't know yet because... They haven't been in the game. They haven't looked. They really don't know what's going on. There's some people who are still out of the know right. in that regard. But if you're a home seller right now, or if you've been in the you know the game as a buyer for a year or so, you've seen a noticeable difference in what's taking place. <clears throat> if you're an investor, which is really who we're talking to Correct. here, yeah. you've been fighting with these super crazy low cap rates for years. Right, and I don't, and I don't see that that's really going to change because you have so many forces that are pressing on the investor in, in California that it really makes it almost an impossible task for them to uh, make it work because most of them will rely on the fact of they're gonna they're gonna cross their fingers on appreciation that's that's the that's the California game if you're an investor it's because in cap rates you're you you have to kind of suffer and kind of suck it up and take what you get and that becomes a problem when you're looking for <clears throat> mailbox money when you load everything into, well, the California always goes up. And now that <laughs> is not true. Yeah. And, and so as an investor, you've, you know, if you're getting a little older, how do you take that risk and say, well, I, I, I hope it will? Well, a lot of the investors who are making cash flow on their California real estate right now, they bought these homes or they've owned them for decades. Or, you know what I mean? They, they bought them in the 90s or the early 2000s or... At some point, it was a foreclosure and fixed it up, and they, they've done something that was very hands-on. Right. There was it wasn't always passive. They had to do a lot of work. They bought it right. There's a lot of other factors involved. Yes. So there are a few people out there who are getting mailbox money in sure. California real estate. These are also the same people who would have a a lot of recapture if they decided to sell um, those properties right now, and that's probably why they don't do it. But for people who are trying to make new investments or to 1031 stuff or you know they're trying to figure out all right well do I get back in this right. if I just had a good exit because the appreciation is what it's always been about in fact for years and I remember leading up to the the crash of a decade ago <clears throat> yes people that one. yeah that one <laughs> people were were like negative a thousand bucks a month in rent and cool oh yeah they, no they, they were all, all fine, fine with that and and because uh, it was always based upon the premise of the property will appreciate, and at some point, the ship will pop back up above the water, and I'll be okay. And until it doesn't. Until it doesn't. And, and, that's, that's, a, and that's the thing, is that from, from a strategy standpoint, that's where you know, I always want, and, and in real estate, I've always looked at it as that I need the odds in my favor. I need, I need everything possible um, to where if I'm going to be, be in this game, I, I don't want to have to have a very narrow path to success in, in what I'm doing. Um, I want some. I want some breadth for mistakes, m market shifts, things that I can't control. But it's not going to change my ability to make my money, and that's to me is where the opportunity is. Even for California investors now, is that you know you look at at, at the cap rates. It's like you know how do I double that up and 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 get to ten percent? Because that's kind of a crazy number when you when you think about. If you're like, what? Yeah. What'd you say? 10%. <laughs> no, I mean, no, no joke. People will come in here, at, you know, pitching real estate properties, properties for, that mm -hmm. are investment properties. And they're saying, hey, it's a four and a half cap. Right. Oh, yeah. And, it's, and, this and, is and a, they're high-fiving and isn't this awesome? And it's true. <laughs> it is really good for around here. Right. For around here being the key thing. Well, but when you look at, at the pressure of the inability for the the renters d are not making the same money so the, the the owner and the landlord has to keep rents at a place to where it doesn't press because it, it, it'll outstrip affordability and and we see that now when you look at kind of the ratios i mean you know you're you know i'm i, I see these half million dollar condos and and they're asking you know they're they're happy to get 2800 2900 you know, just because, and that's really, they should be able to, in the market, you would say that they should get, get, get five grand a month for it. And, it's, and, and they're not, and they can't. And so all, all that pressure, I mean, Southern California is the most expensive for living, it's most expensive for buying. 
and, we, and then we can get, get into into the wonderful state of California and how they look at you know, taxes and things like that. And all these pressures continue just to put a lot of weight on the on the average investor of saying, I don't know that I really want to, or I don't know how to, or when I look at it, it's just like too much risk, not not enough in my favor. And and then they just kind of like, well, so I guess I'll just throw it in, you know, keep it in my IRA and cross my fingers, you know, what the market's going to do. Now, for the last few years, that kind of was okay. Now that's even changing. Stock market. That, right, that's even changing. Because like, the stock market isn't, you know, the safe haven of like, well, real estate's too complicated or it's, it's too this uh, or that. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to just leave it in the market because apparently that always goes up too. I'm going to leave the stock market alone today, but I'm going to put the final nail <laughs> in the California real estate coffin with this one story. And then we're going to talk about solutions. Yes. <coughs> so a really good buddy of mine is up in Long Beach. Um, he and his partner, they buy multifamily real estate, and it's their big thing, mostly in the L.A. area. Right. Huge deals these guys are doing. $10 million property, $12 million properties. Last time I was up there, I saw him. He said they were in the process of closing on one, looked, looked really good. And I said, tell me about it. You know, how good does it look? And he's like, well, it's like a five cap, so I feel really good about it. He was super excited. This is, yeah. a, this is a $10 million, wow. I think, yeah. 55-unit property in Long Beach. And so I was just like, wow, that's bonkers. He's super stoked about this five cap and it's, a, it's an old place. Like it's not like someone just refurbished the thing right. or anything like that. It's, you know, probably needs maintenance. There's other things involved. You have upkeep you know, and you've got to take all that out of that five. Um, and he was stoked. So that's the, that's the final nail I'm going to put in the, the California real estate coffin because what what you've done and what you've been able to do and you and your partners have done is sort of crack the code of like, well, hey, you can still live in California. Listen, man, everybody wants to live here. Right. That doesn't mean uh, your, 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 your money has to uh, be here. I mean, think, think of it this way. You know, if, if, if you knew buddies in the financial industry and they were, you know, all had California-based mutual funds, and you're like, that's all I'm going to invest in just because I, I just do everything in California. But there were much better ones elsewhere. But you're like, no, 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 I, I just, I like California. You, you kind of look at it and say, well, wait a minute. It's, it's you can, it's about your money. Your, your, your money doesn't care where it's at. It just, it's, if you think of your dollar bills as your employees, you just want your employees to work hard for you. It's not really necessarily, because they, they get up every day and they do what they're told. Or they just do whatever it is of where they're at. And sometimes that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. So in this case, how does someone get 10% cap rates plus on investment real estate? Well, n number one, it's the, the investor needs to be able and be willing to look outside the state lines. <clears throat> I just think that that, that, that ship has really <clears throat> sailed for um, the, the average investor. Because uh, again, a, a lot of the ones that, that I interact with and talk with is, you know, they'll start with one or two and, you know, and then, then they'll, they'll kind of scale from there. So sometimes they are just starting out, but there's a lot that also are, are looking at that 1031. And they're like, well, I sell this for a million two. Well, I can trade it out, but I, I'm just trading out one headache for another. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of right back in it. I just, I'm on this treadmill. So number one, I, I, I believe that you have to go outside the states and get out of state. Uh, because that changes the first dynamic dramatically. Now, then f from there, you have to look at, well, where? You know, it's a, it's a big world out there. Where, where do I go? So that's the second thing is that you need to go into areas to where uh, there's, there's a couple things. You need to, to look at um, how that the market responds to downturns in, in, in the economy. So you go back and you can look at, at the last... Uh, at the last downturn, how well do those markets do? Because again, I, I can go find good cap rates in a lot of places outside of California. But we also know that if, if markets ever take a tank or, or a dip the way that they did, it makes exiting really difficult. I mean, you're just gonna, you're gonna be underwater and some, you know, we know, how many people handed the keys over and just said, I'm, I'm, this doesn't work. Or all of a sudden the streets are blank and there's no one um, job markets change, and there's no one to actually rent your property, so you and it's underwater. Solid job market. Right. So you have to look at that actual market and, and choose wisely um, to, to make sure that you've got um, the ability for rents to be able to perform on a long-term 
basis. So you look at the economy and you, and you look at, at, their, at their industry and the breadth and, and depth of it, uh, not just where you can get a better cap rate, because that's not that difficult. But then on the one-offs or whatever the case might be, you, the, then the real thing is the systemization of how they are running those properties and how uh, what you can step into. Because the other part is, you know, if, if I find a property in, in Arizona, or if I find it, you know, in, in, in Texas, but I want mailbox money. I, so I don't want to be, be a landlord. I don't want to have to be, you know, I can set up something for them to auto-debit my, you know, for the rent or whatever the case might be, and I can act like I'm a, I'm a landlord, but then you've got to deal with um, who's going to take care of it. Okay, so you, you, you go call up and you find, you find some. The other part is, did you find a good one? Or is it really Uncle Eddie that's really yeah. acting as, you know, a property manager and it's not going to really work out very well? He's going to call you. <laughs> Shit is full. <laughs> exactly. Right? So, <laughs> so you've got to look but at that, all... That was my next question, though, yeah. because I'm interested. You know, it's, it's interesting to me. Um, the idea of being able to say, hey, you know, you can take money, park it in real estate somehow. I mean, I've, I've heard of uh, REITs, you know, and, and things like that. Um, which this doesn't sound like that, no. but it, you know I've heard of things that are similar where people said, "Hey, there's returns. They're very solid. It's in real estate. It's just like buying an investment property, but it's more hands off." And what you're saying makes sense. Hey, go to a market outside of California. Go to. I've heard people talking about Idaho and Oklahoma and all these. But I've heard of these things for right. years. But again, it's another thing where it's like, yeah, that's a sounds like a full time job. I'm going to have to figure out who property managers are. I'm going to have to like scour the market to make sure I'm getting a decent deal. Someone's going to have to look at the property and make sure that it's not a piece of crap before right. I buy it. Someone's going to have to find a renter. Someone's going to have to collect the rent. All that sounds like a lot of work to me. Right. And that's the part where you, as an investor, you want to basically get something that's already done for you. So you walk in that it's already rented, it's rehabbed, it's cash flowing, and next month you've got mailbox money. But you're also in a system that has been, been long proven. So it's things like this. So you buy like properties to where so that you know that you're going to be able to uh, buy the same kind of parts in volume. So when you have things that, that, that break, you've got it on the truck and are, you know, you got guys that are going to be able to know exactly, you know, what, what you've got to do. It's kind of like the uh, Southwest model. When they, when one of the things that makes them so profitable is that all their planes are, are, are the same. So when something breaks, They've been able to buy volume of parts. It's not like you look at a lot of airlines and they've got 10 different kinds of planes. So one thing is that you, you have a system to where you're, you're buying numbers. So the thing is if, if you deal with properties that are all basically the, the same, the rock solid ones, things that we, you, know, you, put wood, you, you put the linoleum floors in, you, you do everything the same to where it has longevity, it's fixable, you, you go in and you can deal with all of the mechanicals in the same way, that gets systems down to where you're really managing at that, at that level to where it gives the investor a, what I call a sleepability factor, where they, where they know that, okay, this thing is rehabbed right, I have very low um, risk of, of anything major because of how it's done up front. And we're talking, um, I would say, we're 900 doors in, the guys that, that I work with and I even have my own properties with, and depositing a half a million a month into investors' mailboxes. So, so it's, it's, we've gotten that, that, that to that point to where it's not where someone's trying to figure it out. So, so the systems are down to where they're specialized, and the specialization in the management is, I would say, is the secret sauce, not just going out and finding a property, because you can, you can do that out, outside the state lines fairly easily, but there's so many blind corners for an investor that they still have risk that they should want to cover, because at the end of the day, it's a lot opening up the mailbox and having that, that rent or just auto deposit, which that's what- I think do. that's much easier. Right. No. We should stop calling it mailbox exactly. money and we call it ACH money. Right, exactly. <clears throat> so, so then what you have then is a way for like an investor like me to participate in what you've already been doing. Right. So how does that work? I mean, how do I, how do I get, you know, what do I do? What do I, what do I look at? How do I figure out if I, if I can get involved? What do I need to get involved? I think for, for most, a lot of them, it's, it's more just of, of, of a conversation because again, it, it could be someone that says, I've got IRA money, can I, can I use that? The answer is yes. So okay, you, so you, let me give you an example then. Yep. Let's say I have uh, 100,000 in an IRA. Is that enough? Sure. Oh, yeah, out of state, yes. You're in California? <laughs> no. 
that's not enough in California. Okay. <laughs> what would it be enough to do? Well, again, if you're going to finance, you could actually finance some properties, and you could, you, you could probably have, get four or five. You have four or five properties. Oh, if you finance. Correct. Use the IRA as down payment. Correct. <clears throat> so, and, and if not, you've, you've, got, you've got easily, easily w one property. So that's a great place to start. Cash, boom, and, and you're off to the races. And that, a lot of investors you know, start like that. I, I did that. I bought one, and I bought another one. So sometimes it's kind of like you, you, slowly, you slowly do it. But it could also be the one that's, that's um, I've, I've, I've talked to investors to where they've said, look, I've got this house and I want to sell it and travel the world, but I'd like to have cash while I'm traveling. Well, so what do I do? Well, let's transfer that, that out and 1031 it and we'll take you know, the, the million two and you could get yourself 10 properties. Phone's already ringing. There it is. <laughs> so it, so it, 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 it makes it to where all of a sudden that you, know, you, that you can go live the life you want. It doesn't matter whether you know, as you get in your 40s and, and 50s, all of a sudden, though, the, the, the dynamic changes and you really want something that is that simple. So I see the IRA money uh, flowing in. I see the 1031s. And I also just see the, the cash buyers that says, you know, look, I, I, I can and I, I get it. So I want something that I can count on, but I'll just start with like one or two. Okay. Well, let's, let's continue that example because I want to get as granular as I can sure. with this because I know there are going to be a lot of people who want to know how do I get 10% cap rates. I mean, right now, as you know, investors are struggling Three, four percent, very normal. My buddy's stoked on a twelve million dollar purchase for five. You talk yeah, to him. a five banger. You know what I mean, <laughs> right? And so the the question is, I have okay. I have my hundred thousand yep. in my IRA. You said I can get one property. That's what I'm interested. In. I don't want to finance, so I just want to buy one property. What property? What am I? How am I getting a property? So we've got a set of uh, we've got <clears throat> in inventory. You can go look at the numbers. You find what fits. Um, I'll even have some that I'll I'll even. I mean, I've seen we'll, we'll, we'll fly them out to, <coughs> to, to our location. They, they want to go touch and, and feel it and see it. That, that's right. fine. So it's a, it's, a, it's a property that already exists. Yep, already rehabbed. It's already rehabbed. Are already done. So, so, we, so they're already bought. We own them. It's rehabbed. It's done. And it's rented? Already, it's rented. It's rehabbed and rented. It's, it's rehabbed and rented. So we don't, you don't have to, have to worry about that. Okay. All, all, all those pieces, and you're, really, really, it's just kind of, you're flipping, you're turning on the switch. So, in, in my case, let's say we're going to make numbers really easy yeah. today. So, I have 100000 in my IRA. <coughs> I find a property that's 100000 Yep. And it's renting out for 1000 bucks a month. Yep. Maybe more. Okay. Let's just call it 1000 Sure. Bucks. E easy <coughs> numbers. Easy numbers today. You guys have this on your inventory list. Yep. I say, okay, I want to buy this out of my IRA, which you said I can do. Sure. So it's inside my IRA. The money, then the, the rent, that thousand bucks a month just goes in the IRA? Yep, exactly. Every month. Every month. And I don't have to do anything. No. I just pick the property. <laughs> this right. is what you're saying. Right. It's already rehabbed. Right. It's already rented. Yep. It's ready to go. Yep. I pick the property. I buy it through the IRA. Right. So I, I own the house. Correct. The house is mine. It's yours. But you guys manage everything, and the check comes into. My IRA. Everybody. Correct, and, so, and some of the, the the leases are some are two and three years, where you it's basically you know done for a multi year contract that's already set. And what happens when that uh, lease is up, for example? Well, we'll be on top of that way way ahead of time. So and, you handle that? Yes. So I really don't have to do anything. No, and and and, and vacancies, you know what, two um, percent. I mean, you know, so so again, there's always those things, but but you've you've got such a uh, a wide berth of you know when you get a couple of of, of properties, <clears> the uh, nice thing is that you know you've got a lot of latitude that it, even if you've got a turnover and you've got a you've got it where it's being um, you know someone leaves or a little sooner or whatever the case might be, or you just got a, a, a bit of a break. It doesn't I don't see it a lot, and that goes back to where you do this is so important for for that purpose. Because if you do it in other places and the economy shifts, all of a sudden, vacancies turn into four, five, six months. Well, that's a that could be a problem for mailbox money or ACH money. I mean, that's so. Where are we buying? Issue. Where are we buying these properties? I mean, we're not we're not talking about like Mexico or no. It's uh, in, in in the Midwest is is just where we've done it, and this is where it's at because it just it fits all that criteria, and uh, and I don't see that that's going to necessarily change. I. I can, 
I can look at other areas, but I would say, it, to me, it's always better to, to do something in some place and do it well. And so how we buy the properties and, and how <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's done to where it's all where we're buying the right kind of properties. And there's enough inventory for us to do that for our investors. And the economy is correct. And mm -hmm. it's, it's set up to where we have everything, where we're not dealing with you know, 12 different lo locations and 12 different management companies and us trying to handle all that. We just do one thing really, really well, which is why I, I started when I, when I bought, it was like, okay, that makes sense. And, and, and the partner that I work with, I, you know, this is our, our, will be our fourth venture together. Um, he, he started it out and I kind of watched, but it, it, it became obvious is that this really is, a, is an unmet niche, not so much about real estate in general, but where you really have all the boxes checked of how you run the systems and how you make it to where for the investor, it is a truly turnkey where they're like, I don't want to get into all the details. I, I, I would just like to have it to where I can, if it's bought, I don't want to deal with rehab and find contractors. I don't want to deal with that out of state. I don't want to deal with finding a renter that's out of state. I don't want to have to try to find and hire the right management company that's out of state. Because again, if you think about it, we, you know, a, a lot of what I've seen from additional properties being bought are current, are current clients. Which means when you, it's kind of you get in and you, and you taste the cooking, you're like, oh, this is kind of good. Can I get another plate? Mm -hmm. Can I have some more, please? And so, so that's, 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 and I get that because out of state is, is, a, is enough of a, of a little mind shift for a lot of investors that it it's makes sense to sometimes you know, tip your toe in, in the water and say, let me start with one or two and let me see how that works and then we grow from there. And that, that's the typical path of, of what I've watched happen uh, over the years. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> makes sense and seems too good to be true. I mean, it just so you've got every box checked so simple, but you say you've done this it, 900 it, times? Yeah. We're nine, we're not over, it's over, over 900 doors that we've done this. So it's, it, again, we're not seeing if we've got the right pieces. We, it's, but as, as an investor, that's what, that's what you want. I mean, so when I, when I started investing in, 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 in 08, um, I was, that was new for me. And so the, the systems at that point were still, it was still being built. But I also had a relationship, and I knew these guys, and, and, and so it was a little bit easier for me. Now, 900 doors later, it's kind of like, okay, can we get beyond that conversation of like, this is not, we're not practicing. They practiced on me. And, and the funny thing is, it, it really, it worked out, out, out great. I mean, I, I had low vacancies. My rents were, were solid. I had a great experience with the management company. They, they just really, even then, they were on the right track. And of course, you always just, you, you just keep getting better. And that just makes it better for the, for the investor to where they're like, okay, okay, now maybe out of state isn't as scary as it might sound. Because the inclination is always to want to stay in your backyard for, for anything. It's just, it, it's more comfortable. But that doesn't necessarily mean what's best for your money. But if you're going to do that, you got to make sure all those boxes are checked so that, I always call it, it's that, it, so you can sleep at night and not worry about something, you know, 2,000 miles away. Well, it's, a, it, it's really a big deal for people who are real estate investors here who have seen, they, maybe they did hit the lotto and they were, they were hoping for the appreciation and they got it, you know, the past six, sure. seven years. And, the, and there are those like that, a absolutely. <clears throat> and, but they're sitting here going, okay, I've made it there now, I guess I have to sell, right? Because this is what I've been waiting for. I've, I've been I've breaking seen, even on rent. I've seen, I've seen house values drop at the rate of what you could, you could have bought another house <laughs> out of state for what it's dropping here yeah it and it boggles my mind because once that's gone that it's, it's gone it's, it's gone and and maybe it comes back uh, but the the timeline of of for the eggs to be in that basket and the pressure that's going to be on, on 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 your cap rates in that in that time period it just doesn't have to be that way it it just doesn't well the thing that i like about is the the idea of being able to diversify so let's say I bought that property and I've, I've made some money on it, um, some equity, and I can sell it now and I have three or $400,000 of money. I need to 1031, right. but I'd rather not put it all in one basket mm -hmm. 
and I can go and maybe buy four or five or six houses out of state at a much higher cap rate, all cash, so I don't have a loan. Correct. It's just you're just trading out so you don't, you don't get get. Taxed. And then, boom, I can get that cash money coming in. Correct. And it could be coming into my IRA if I want it to. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if the money's from right. the IRA, it can right. go in there, right. which is really nice. Um, but let's say, I don't, let's say I'm not an IRA investor. Yep. Let's say I'm just uh, a cash investor. Yep. Same, same. same Doesn't same. have to be IRA. No. It's just it, the, we. All those doors are available. Just knowing of where the, an investor can come from. It can come from someone that says, "I I don't have the skills to be in the market the way it is in the stock market, and I need to make sure that I've got consistency." So they've got this IRA. It could be an old four hundred one or whatever, and they're like. I would be more comfortable looking at real estate, but I got to figure out how to do that. So we, we, we see that a lot of, it, of uh, properties being um, uh, purchased through, through that avenue. And you get the ones that have real estate. It could be family or it could be an investor that's saying, mm, maybe I should actually look at you know, trading this out. And so a 1031 can come from multiple different kinds of scenarios. And then you just have to have the cash buyer. And then you also have those that are are really wanting to get into it, and they're starting out with a little bit less money, and so they'll will actually have uh, an occasional one or two. They'll actually um, finance. And so the house is mine. I own the house. Yep. And uh, if the house goes up in value or something like that, I sell it. I make that proper my, that profit. I can sell it whenever I want. Basically, I just put it on the market and then exit that way. Right. And, and again, you're it, it's it the the, the trade off is this: if you're if you're in an out of state real estate, the trade off is cash flow for crazy appreciation. And, I, to, and to me, I would say that there, that fits so many uh, in, investors that, that look at it and say, look, I can be tagging 10%. I, I, don't, I don't need to, in, you know, in 10 years, if I want to, to cash out, if I've got some appreciation, great, but I've had 10 years of really consistent mailbox money, and that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to where I've got, because again, Bills tend to come every month. Yeah. <laughs> so for most investors, Fact. and it, you know, it's, it's you know, you if something's not working or, or the market take takes a tank and you've got to rob the, the golden goose, that that really can weigh on on a person of, of how they look at their future and they they look for for those safe harbors of where can I really um, get it to where I I'm not feeling that I'm putting my 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 golden goose at risk. And this is, to me, is one of the, the best ways an investor can do it. Well, let's answer Ross's question here. He says, what company is this guy from? That's a good question. I yeah, so, you brought a book in here today, too. Yeah, so, so, my, so, my, so my good buddy, um, Michael Drew, he's, uh, he's out in California a lot, and so I'm, I'm handling more down here in, 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 in San Diego. But uh, outofstate.com is kind of where um, I've, I've, I've branded it with him. Uh, he has his, his brand. We're kind of a co-branded real estate done for you. So the idea, it's done for you. And um, so that's, 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 that's who we are. We're, awesome. just, we're just guys that have put all the pieces together and want to tell our story um, and help investors that are in, in that same boat, boat that I came from, and that are looking for, looking for some answers. It's the same boat that a lot of real estate investors are in here in the state of California, all over the state of California, because it's expensive everywhere, in case you haven't noticed. Very, very interesting topic, and more to come on this. Uh, this is the first conversation we're going to have about this, because yeah. I know a lot of people are going to want to hear more. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for coming in Absolutely. today. It's great to see you, man. really appreciate you your bet. time. You got it. You are now officially smarter than everyone else when it comes to investing in real estate, not in California. Not in California. You want higher cap rates, that's where you got to go. And Scott Boyer is going to be back to tell us more about how you can do that in future segments for now. Click the information below if you'd like to, to get more info from Scott, and we'll guide you to the right page for that. And, of course, today we've got more coming up here in Smarter San Diego. We've got listed live later today as well, where we give you a guided tour of the hottest homes for sale in San Diego, so stick around for more of that later.